Hey guys, a few days ago was my 10th year wedding anniversary and I decided to do a Q&A where I answer your questions candidly, okay? Like to the best of my ability, I'm going to be as honest as possible. So let's just dive right into the questions. Yeah, I'm going to be starting with the questions I got on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, it is at Adese Space. Please go and follow me on Instagram. I like to do Q&As more there. Alright, so the first question is, are there times when you feel like, ah, I know marry again, no, come they go. Yes, there are times like that. There are times I just feel like, what am I even, what, what's all this? Like, I don't need all this in my life. Why am I even married? It doesn't last long. The feeling, those feelings come once in a while. And when they come, shortly after, I'll be like, ah, thank God I'm married, yeah. Thank God I got married when I got married. Thank God I'm married to the man I got married to. Thank God I am actually married and I have my kids and my beautiful life, okay? Do the fights reduce with time or not lie with the chop? No, no be lie with the chop, oh. Yes, the fight actually reduce with time but what I'll say is that the fights become more intense okay so we don't fight for stupid, stupid things anymore we don't we hardly fight we hardly quarrel we hardly have issues but whenever we have issues they are more intense issues like there are issues that you know are serious that's why we're fighting about it but other less important issues other things that we might have thought about you know in the beginning of our marriage they reduce drastically like you know me now i know you now very well like we except you want to be frustrating yourself that's when you'll be you know fighting over those little little things you're just going to give up on some of those little little fights and yeah so it's it's less but more intense i got so many questions about my relationship with my in-laws simply because i don't talk about my in-laws that much in fact i don't think i talk about my in-laws at all and it's for a purpose okay my husband is actually a very private person like in fact the, the things people are seeing about him on youtube it's me that is forcing it. He's a very, very private person. So I just extended that respect and cut it to his family because I don't want to be talking about them when even talking about himself is a stretch. Okay? <laughs> yeah, so that's just it. What's the greatest thing you have learned in your 10 years of marriage? What's the greatest thing for me? I think one of the greatest things I've learned is that as long as both of you want that marriage, as long as both of you are fighting for the same things, as long as both of you have the same vision, you have the same picture of your lives in the future, you have the same, you know, core values, that's all, okay? That's all you need to be together. Every other thing, you can work it out. As long as both of you really want that marriage, both of you can work anything out, except domestic violence and stuff like that. But again, if you really want your marriage, you won't be beating your wife, you won't, you know, be insulting your husband, you won't, you know, be, you won't be undermining each other or trying to, you know, destroy each other, okay? So, I think it still goes back to what I'm saying, as long as both of you want that marriage with your spirit, soul and body, as long as both of you have a clear picture of, you know, what you want your life to be, you have a clear vision and you are both working towards that vision and you communicate that vision regularly, I think every other thing is a piece of cake, okay? Um, yeah, I've, I've learned so many things though, but let me just say that's the greatest, I don't know. What's one thing about marriage you have always heard or were advised that never applied to you? Okay, this is actually a very interesting question. Let me start from what I was advised, okay? So one thing I was advised that did not apply to me in any way, shape or form is about serving my husband food, you know? In a very you, you know you cook you serve your husband in a special place you know you, you are the kind of, you, all those kind of things it doesn't apply to me my mom anytime my mom comes to visit it still baffles her how I, how I serve my husband I just carry his food put it inside a tray and give it to him that's it okay but for my mom she expects me to on the dining table bring out coolers and you know just basically do like a very nice spread or whatever or food so when my husband wants to eat you know I'll not dish out from the plate and serve him a First of all, the man that I'm doing that for doesn't even want it. Doesn't even want to eat on the dining table. Since we've been married, I think it's only once or twice that we've ever eaten on the dining table, okay? And I'm sure that once or twice my mom was there and so we were all on the dining table eating, you know? So, he doesn't like it on the dining table. He prefers eating on his office table, which is, you know, has office things there. So, where do you want to spread the food, <laughs> you know? So, or, or, or on the bed. And on the bed, he just hold his food in his hand and eat. So, it doesn't apply to me. Even though this, ah, food is a way to a man's heart, this, that, this, that. Doesn't apply to me. My husband just eats for survival. He just eats food because it does nothing used to hungry him. Nothing used to. He doesn't have any oh I'm craving this or he just eats because yeah he needs to eat. So it doesn't apply to me. Then one thing I've always heard about marriage that doesn't apply to me. You guys, social media, uh, social media almost ruined my marriage. Like this is candid talk, okay? Social media almost ruined my marriage. If you guys know me, you know that personally. 
I don't see myself as disadvantaged in any way, shape, or form. I don't see marriage as a disadvantage to a woman. I don't feel like anything is. I don't. I don't feel like. I don't even feel like I'm disadvantaged generally because I'm a woman. When I hear people saying things about how women are disadvantaged and this and that, personally, I don't really argue with them because, I mean, maybe it's their personal experience is what they think. But for me personally, I don't believe that I'm a disadvantaged person. I don't believe anything is holding me back from achieving any goal I want to achieve in this life. Okay, whether I'm a woman or nothing is holding me back, okay? Uh, when people talk about, oh, sacrificing uh, uh, your career to have kids or whatever, I'm like, that's a sacrifice I would gladly have. Have 10 times over okay for me it's not even a sacrifice for me it's a no-brainer and I, I know I might, I know that the story is different for other women but for me having kids you know having a family being a wife it is not limiting me anyway um, being a woman in society is not limiting me in any way like I don't think it's anything now that applies to men that doesn't apply to me there's no law that I'll say okay by law this thing applies to men doesn't apply to me so I don't believe that I'm, I'm disadvantaged as a woman okay in fact I believe that I have some advantages that other people might not really have, both male and female, okay? E.g. pretty privilege. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? So yeah, that is who I am personally. But again, like I said, I'm not, it's my own personal experience. I'm not forcing down anybody's truth. I don't care how you feel. If you say that women are disadvantaged, okay, that's your business. But for me, I don't think it is true. But that being said, I didn't know that all these stories on the internet where people are like, oh, husbands this, husbands that, husband that, marriage is this, marriage is that, disadvantage, this one, women, this women, that, gender, this, gender, that. I didn't know that all those talk was kind of getting to me somehow. I did not know it, okay? I started judging my husband based on all these things I hear about men, men are this, men are that, gender this, gender that, women this, marriage is that, marriage... I started judging my husband. I didn't even know I was doing it because, like I said, I personally don't see myself as someone who is disadvantaged or someone who is oppressed or whatever. But somehow, because I was, because I'm on social media all the time, I'm seeing all these news, all these stories. Anytime he's doing something I don't like, I start seeing it as it's because I'm a woman you're doing this to me. It's because I'm your wife. If I wasn't this one, and I started judging him like all men instead of judging my individual, you know. Um, relationship and situation, I started judging him as all men. So I started interpreting some of his actions like, yes, this is how men are. Men are this, men are that, men are that, okay? Until, yeah, it got so bad though. It was getting it was getting too bad that anything he does that is wrong. He's having to see it as, oh, this thing you did to me is wrong. And he's doing this thing because to him, he had good intentions. And he's doing that because he feels, that's what he knows, okay? He feels that that's the best way to go about it. That's what, you know, he has decided to do. It's of me to just judge him based on that, knowing who my husband is. I mean, we've been for 10 years, so I know him. It's not me to judge him based on that. I was reading extra meaning, okay? So be careful what you, you you swallow or digest on social media, okay? And this is me or someone who does not even believe that I'm oppressed. This is me who's trying to, you know, push out a different narrative about what marriage is like. And this is me who, you know, every opportunity I get, I try to make people understand that, see, you're not a victim. Don't have this victim mentality. That's me, yo. Still, I was the same person who was still internalizing some of these things. So it got to a stage where if we have any issues or he does something I don't like, my mindset is always like, ah, I beg go. I better protect my future. I better not end up like one of those women on the internet. I better... Until one day, I have to just sit down and ask myself that, what are you saying? Like, you, you are clearly not like these women. Your story is clearly not like them. Your husband is clearly not like the men that, I, that they talk about. Why are you, you know beginning to feel this way you know so, so social media was trying to ruin my marriage you i had to fight it with everything that i got okay right after your wedding did you guys sit down to plan life i'm a new wife less than a month old okay no did we do that right after our wedding no we were already planning life before our wedding you know i don't know what you guys do when people are cutting when people are you know engaged when people are dating i don't know what people are doing you know but for me I started planning my life from that stage. I started, you know, asking some re relevant questions to know basically what his idea of our future was and whether it's, it's you know, aligned with mine, okay? So, we didn't ever just sit down and say, okay, time to plan life, try time this. Oh yeah, bring out Excel sheets, bring out the, this one, bring out plan and do, <laughs> whatever. No, we didn't do that, but throughout our cutting period, throughout our, throughout our dating period, then even our early marriage period, we had so many conversations about our future, how we're going to do things, you know, so that was it basically. When you finally agreed to marry your husband, were there things you weren't 100% comfortable with? Of course, like, of course, there are things that I knew that I was going to have to manage, 
the same way I'm sure he has things about me that he knew he was going to manage, okay? So, of course, there were things I wasn't 100% comfortable with. Again, like I said, they weren't the core things, okay? They weren't the most important things. They were just peripherals. They were just extras that I just knew I could live with, okay? But the core, the very core things, the very important things, I was 100% comfortable with them. Are there things you wish to change in your marriage? Um... For now, I don't, I don't even know. I think I've basically learned to cope with all the things that I would have wanted to change. So right now, I don't even care anymore. Like, I can't even, nothing really comes to mind when I read, you know, when I, when I read this question. Nothing really came to mind because, is there anything I'd like to change? Maybe my husband's, nature, nature of my husband's job, but that doesn't have to do directly with my marriage. So, I don't know, but maybe the nature of his job, I would have wished, I wish he was more, he was around more often, okay, but... Yeah, I don't think there are things that I... Is there anything I wish I, I could change about my marriage? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What things did you do early on that makes you laugh or cringe? <laughs> I have so many things though. So... <laughs> I have so many things that make me laugh or cringe. Yee! I have so many things though, but let's just say that I was really, really childish in the beginning. I can be childish though. You guys, people don't know me. Though. I can be very, very childish. <laughs> I'm petty. So yeah, I think I was more of that in the beginning. Um, yeah, like I used, to throw, I used to throw tantrums. I used to cry at some, you know, nonsense things. I used to make assumptions anyhow. I used to jump, fly into, as, into assumptions or whatever. Yeah, so I can't really pinpoint one now, but I knew that at the beginning of my marriage, I was, yeah, I was really childish. Any advice for a newlywed? Yes, my advice for a newlywed is it will come to pass, okay? It will come to pass or it has come to pass. It will pass, okay? So some of those things that you are going through in the early stages of marriage and you feel like I can't deal, I can't, I can't cope. You start regretting your whole decision. Trust me, it's going to pass. You're going to grow as a person. Your husband is going to grow as a person. You're going to look back and you're going to be like... I want to cringe at some of the things that, you know, we are your deal breakers then in marriage or things that thought were, you thought were going, was going to shake your marriage. You are going to cringe at some of those things. Again, if they are not life-threatening, they are not, you know, very serious issues, trust me, it's going to pass. You are going to even get used to some of those things. Those things that you feel like, ah, I can't deal with this. You will get used to it, my dear. Mm, you will get used to it. You are not going anywhere. Don't worry. You are not leaving. Don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, next question. I got a lot of questions like this and it says, Waking up and seeing the same face every day, how does that feel, okay? So first of all, I don't wake up and see the same face every day, okay? If you guys know my story, you know that my husband is not around every single day, so I don't wake up and see his face every single day, so this question does not really apply to me. Ah, so this question doesn't really apply to me and my marriage. Um, I'm, not, I'm not used to seeing my husband every single day. When, I, when he's around, I see him every single day. But he's not around for you know extended periods as well. So I know what you are referring to, but I don't think it really applies to my own case, okay? Because he goes and comes, goes and comes. He's always fresh. Let me put it that way. Things are always fresh. <laughs> That's the upside to him, you know, not being around all the time. So he's asking, and this is an important question. The person is saying, how important is physical attraction? I think physical attraction is quite important, okay? For me, for me, yo, people try to downplay it, blah, 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 blah. It's quite important, okay? You need to find your partner attractive. Now, trust me, you are going to find anybody you spend so much time with attractive. I said the person is one hideous tree monster or something. Anybody you spend so much time with, after a while, you are going to find the person attractive, okay? So, what's even my point now with this? Um... So my point is that you don't need to have like Mr. Nigeria. You don't need to get married to Mr. Nigeria, but just make sure that you're attracted to the person you're getting married to. Like he's fine. At least he's okay in your eyes. Okay. In your eyes, though, it's not in society's eyes, it's not in your friends' eyes. It's not about what people around you say about him. If in your own eyes the person you're getting married to is attractive, then yeah. To me, it's important. I don't know. I'm not going to come here and start saying it's not important. It's the soul, it's the heart. I beg it. Um, yeah, but that's just me. You, I don't know. It might not apply to other people, but that's just me. What is something you were never told about marriage but discovered with experience? I think. Oh, what is it now? I think it's the sex part. I think that I was never told. In fact, I wasn't told anything about sex to be honest. But I never really knew how much 
childbearing will affect your sex life, okay? And also, I was never even told that it actually gets better. Like, the sex gets better. Maybe because people now know yourselves better. It's no longer awkward. You now know, know what you both like, okay? So the sex gets better, but you're going to be having less and less of it because childbirth, childbearing is going to interfere. Hormonal changes will interfere. Tiredness, busyness, not having, you know, not... In fact, so many things, so many factors are going to come into play that you you're not going to even have the sex, whether you wanted to, whether you want to have it or not. You won't even have the time to have the sex, okay? Because you're now adulting, okay? So I think that's it. Um, yeah. So someone is asking, is it a red flag when your partner does not care about your physical looks? Yes, it is a big red flag. It's a very, very big red flag. I don't even know what exactly you mean, but anyhow you want to mean it, it's a big red flag for me. If your cat, your partner doesn't care about your physical looks, because your partner is a human being for kind of like, if you don't care about how I look, so whose looks do you care about? Whose looks do you care about really? Okay, because I know you care about some of these looks. You're a human being. You cannot tell me that you don't care about anybody's looks in this world. It's a lie. Don't lie to yourself. Okay, so yes, it's a very huge red flag if your partner does not care about your looks. Okay, so the next question is, what do you appreciate the most about your husband and what does your husband appreciate the most about you? Funny thing is that we actually had this conversation recently and I think the, the one thing I appreciate the most about my husband, like that's, that thing that, that's, like that's the one thing that jumps out at me a lot, is my husband's discipline and sense of responsibility. My husband is a very disciplined person like it, it shocks me this is 10 years after but it still shocks me like my husband kind of person that you can't come and just change the way things are done simply because of emotions or whatever or because you're not you're feeling you feel like this so he's not led by emotions he's led he's led by logic common sense and discipline okay so if my husband says i want to be eating once a day he will only be eating once a day. It doesn't matter what you bring around him. He will tell you, I want to be eating only once a day, okay? If my husband says, I want to stop doing this or I want to start doing this, he will be doing, if he wants to say, I want to start exercising every single day, he will exercise every single day. Like, he's so disciplined with money. If he says, this is how much I'm going to be saving every month, he is going to be saving that money every month, except something beyond his control stops him from saving that money every month, okay? On the other hand, your girl lacks it in so many ways, so I think that, that part of why it attracts me the most about him because me, I'm, I'm not even going to lie, I lack discipline a lot, like, I can be disciplined in short um, in intervals, like, I can be disciplined in intense, acute, <laughs> have acute discipline, no, I can be disciplined in a very short period about anything but extended period, I, I get bored of everything, even in, including sticking to routines, okay? So after a long period, I, I stop being disciplined, as in, I fall off, okay? So that's one thing I appreciate the most about my husband, the sense of responsibility. I think that's where both of us now have the same character. My husband is a very responsible person, like, he's always thinking about how, you know, things he's supposed to do. Like, anything my husband is supposed to do, like, this is what his job is, he's going to do it very well, both in his actual job and in his, you know, um, role as a father, role as a protector, a provider, a you know, whatever it is that he is to us, my husband kind of person that he takes it, he takes it very seriously. Like he's very serious about his responsibilities, things that he's supposed to do. You can't you can't catch him, you know, wanting when it comes to those things. Then for him, what did he even say, self? I think he appreciates, you know, um, my dedication. Okay my dedication to things not discipline but dedication like he likes how i'm dedicated to you know my youtube channel he likes how i'm dedicated to taking care of my children he likes how i'm dedicated like i'm i don't know how i'm explaining what i'm explaining Sha, but my dedication to things he likes it that's what he said okay okay and also um my ability to forgive or what did he even say how did he put that in self i've forgotten how he put it but he answered it in one q and a I don't really take things to heart. I move on quickly. I, I forgive easily. So he actually likes that as well. Okay, the next question is how do you manage your husband getting you angry and the kids worrying you? Okay, so um yeah, I, I I try to just remove myself from the situation because me I'm a shouter. I'm a shouter, I can shout too. Hmm. Especially for my children, I can shout like I'm kind of person that if I'm angry, my way of expressing it is by shouting, like <laughs> 
and my husband hates it. He absolutely, absolutely hates it because no matter how angry my husband is, he won't even raise his voice. Like when he talks on a normal day, you barely hear him. So imagine him angry, like he, he doesn't raise his voice. So anytime I'm raising my voice, the thing used to affect him. So um, I shout a lot. But for now, what I'm doing is I try to remove myself from the situation, okay? So when my kids are annoying me, I just leave them and come and sit down here first and then calm my spirit down. When I calm my spirit down, I'll now go back there and go and face the situation, okay? Um, yeah, then for my husband annoying me, I try to communicate with him more through chats than talking to him face to face, okay? Or I wait when I'm really, really calm. I started doing that one and it really works well for me. When I'm really, really calm, like I'm no longer angry, like that initial heated, you know, rage is no longer there. I'll now calm down and explain to him exactly you know what he did wrong and i'll tell him i'm not even looking for a response from you or whatever let me just tell you what you did wrong i didn't like after i tell him i'll go most times he will you know explain himself later on or whatever but it really works for me so this is a question what is the secret to your peaceful marriage i think the biggest secret to my peaceful marriage was well, not even a secret first of all is god okay that's one and then two i think me and my husband don't like wahala person like for real, like if someone wants to describe, if someone were to describe me and my husband, both of us do not like Wahala. That's just the truth. Like, I mean, if you guys know from, from YouTube, you'll know. I don't like Wahala. My husband doesn't like Wahala. Okay, so most times we don't have the energy to sustain quarrel. We don't have the energy to sustain arguments or fights. We don't have the so energy to sustain, you know, animosity. We don't have energy for quarrel. So we settle things easily, you know. I'm the one that does more of the settling because I don't, I can't tolerate malice, okay? At all, I can't, I, I can't. So I do more of the settling, like I initiate the settling more than my husband does, but him, he calms things down more than I do because he removes himself from the situation or he'll just be quiet. That's thing I term malice is basically my husband trying to just, you know, <laughs> trying to just, you know, calm himself down, calm everybody down, then before we face the issue. So I think that's what works for both of us. That's why we are both we have are both in a peaceful marriage because nobody has we don't have energy for it. There are so many things that there's so many important things to us that we are focusing all our time and energy on that we don't have time to be fighting each other. Someone is saying, give a practical example of a conflict you had with your hobby and how it was resolved. Uh, I can't go into details like that though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the internet, okay? This is the internet. So I cannot go into details, but what I'll say is that most times we always compromise. Like that is one of the biggest things that happens for us. We always compromise. We meet somewhere in the middle. The, what is the way or how can we do it that it will be acceptable to both, both parties? Where you compromise a little, I compromise a little and then we meet somewhere in the middle. So that's it. Oh, this is a good question. Have you ever had a third party settle you and your husband? Nope. We have never had a third party come and settle us. We don't have any third party in our home. Yeah, there's no third party. Actually, there's no third party, which is quite funny. There's no boy that I will say, Oh, me and my husband are having issues now. I'll call the person. The person will now call my husband. Will now, nah, like we don't have any third party. We settle issues amongst ourselves and we move on, you know. And between ourselves, I mean, and we move on. I think this is going to be my last question for today. And the person is asking, Was your first year of marriage turbulent, like they all, like they usually say? Funny enough, no. My first year of marriage wasn't turbulent. My second year wasn't. My third year wasn't. I think it was from my third year that a little bit of turbulence started happening. But again, like I said, remember, me and my mother were not spending all day every day together. So maybe that third year was when we had spent one year together. <laughs> I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I think it was towards my third, fourth year that we now started having some issues. But I've never really had a turbulent marriage, let me put it that way. But yeah, I think that answers the question. I tried to answer as many as I could. I got so many questions. But yeah, um, 10 years after marriage, we are happy. We are doing well. I'm looking forward to the future. I'm looking forward to greater things ahead. My kids are growing, you know. So I know that so many, we have so many more milestones to spend together, me and my husband. So many more milestones to achieve together and to go through together. So I'm really looking forward to all of that. And yeah, if I wasn't able to answer your question, I'm sorry, but I feel like I answered almost every question one way or the other. Even if I didn't read out the question itself, I must have answered this somehow, you know, already. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye guys!